Come along with me, come along with me on a journey. A journey of learning, a journey of fun, a journey of course, and soon the only true one. King of kings and Lord of lords, Jesus Christ, the only true Son. Come along with me, come along with me, come along with me on a journey. Come along with me, come along with me, come along with me. beautiful children of God. My name is Kentia Middleton and I am on today to do a teaching on hearing God through the Bible. This week we are learning how to hear the voice of God in many ways. I am giving you five ways of hearing the voice of God but on today we will be learning how to hear the voice of God through the Bible. I would say that hearing the voice of God through the Bible is the surest way of knowing His voice. Why is that? Because the Bible says in 2 Timothy 3, 16-17 that all scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching the truth, rebuking error, correcting faults, and giving instructions for right living so that the person who serves God may be fully qualified and equipped to do every kind of good deed. So this tells us right here that the Word of God, the Bible, is inspired by God and everything that is in it is to help us in our walk, is to help us to learn the character of God and to know exactly what God requires of us to do. And we are learning to hear God and reading His Word it will give us the foundation that we need to know what God is saying to us. So right now, if we pick up the Bible and we read a verse out of the Bible, that is God speaking to us. That is God giving us instructions. It is God telling us who He is. It is God telling us who we are. So that is a sure word from God. The Bible says in Psalm 33 and 4, For the word of the Lord is right in all His work is done in truth. So everything that you read in the Bible, it is right. Everything that the Lord does, it is true. Just like the Bible tells us that Jesus, he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to the Father except by him. So we, hit, we see here that I mentioned Jesus, and I wanna go back to a teaching that I already said to you on a previous video when I explain to you that Jesus Christ is the Word of God. If we go in the Bible to John chapter 1 verse 1 to 2, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Go down to John chapter 1 verse 14, where it reads, The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father full of grace and truth. This right here tells us that Jesus Christ is the Word of God. So as we continue to read the Word of God, which is the Bible, we will learn of the ways of Jesus. We will be reading Jesus, who is the Son of God. We will learn of the ways of God, and when, as we continue to read the Bible, we will know the way, we will know the truth, and we will have life because that's what the Bible tells us. That is what Jesus, that is who Jesus is. So now, um, if we would turn to Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, it says, For the word of God is alive and powerful, it is sharper than the sharpest two edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit between joint and marrow, it exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. So what does this tell us? It tells us here that the Word of God is alive. It says the Word of God is alive. What does that mean? So as we speak God's Word, it becomes active and alive. It carries out. It actually performs. The Word of God, it actually moves 
and do whatever it is that God has said. Because the word of God also tells us in the Bible, it says that the word of God will not return into him void. That means it does not come back to him when we speak the word. It does not come back to him empty, but God, he performs everything that his word says. That's why the Bible tells us that God is not man that he shall lie, nor is he son of man that he shall repent. That means that God is not like us who can tell lies. Everything that God says is the truth. Everything that he says, he will do everything that he says. He's not like us that he has to change his mind. Repent. That's what repent means. He doesn't have to change his mind about things because he is sovereign. He is God. He's the one who has created everything, even words. So when we're hearing God, he's saying to us that his word is powerful and it, it moves and is alive. Just like we see if we go back to Genesis chapter 1 and it tells us that God created the heavens and the earth. And it said that the word that when he spoke, it said the Holy Spirit hovered over the earth and then everything became as God spoke the word. That's when everything started happening. So that tells us right there that the word of God is active. It shows us right there in Genesis chapter 1 that the word of God is powerful because every time God spoke the word, the things, the earth, every time God spoke his word, whatever he spoke, it was created. So we're going to go on and the word also says that the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword and that it cuts so, you know, a sword, a two-edged sword is very sharp. So this shows us right here that the word of God is going to break down things in our lives that does not line up with his word. So if we start reading the word of God and we are feeling some type of way about something, say we have an issue with our mother and we feel like our mother is not treating us the right way, but we get into the word of God and we read that the Bible tells us to honor our parents. So right there, the Bible is cutting and it's letting us know that, hey, you know, we might be feeling this type of way, but the Bible tells us to honor our parents. So that means we need to change our attitude. We need to repent, which means change our mind about the way how we feel at this moment. Because the Bible says here, it cuts soul and spirit. What does that mean? Just like I said, do you know what your soul is? Your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. This means that the things that you think about, the things that you want to do in life, and the way how you feel, God says that his word, it cuts between the, those things and spirit. Remember, I explained to you in previous videos that you are a three-part being just like God. And God create. he speaks to us through spirit. He is a spirit and we are a spirit. So when it says right here that it cuts, that the word of God cuts between soul and spirit. It shows us right here that God, he, his word breaks what we may feel and think and the will, the things that we want for our lives and allows us to hear what he is saying. And we are able to do what he says. The more we read his word, the more we get it into us, into our heart, the more we meditate on it. That is the more we will be able to hear God and he will be able to continue to cut our soul away from our spirit so we may walk in the spirit and not in the flesh like the bible tells us to so it also says it cuts between joints and marrow if you think about joints and marrows your joints like your bones and your marrows is what's inside of the bone so that means that god separates those things he separates the the hollow things like your bone if it doesn't have marrow inside of it then it'll be hollow it's it's just uh, uh, something you can hit and knock on something but it has no substance but the marrow is actually the part of the bone that has the nutrition in it is the nutritious part so that means that God will take away the dead part and he will give you the nutritious part his word that's what it does it breaks away the dead areas of our lives and he feeds us when we eat when we read his word we are being fed with truth we are being fed with life we are being fed with power so it also says here, it exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. And that's a great one, a big one, because many of us, we have heard that saying to follow your heart. 
But I tell you, do not follow your heart because God tells us right here that his word, it exposes our innermost thoughts and desires, which is our heart. That's the way how we feel. That's the way the things that we want. And I'm going to go based on the Bible. It says here in Jeremiah 17 and 9, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? So God tells us right there when we follow our heart, uh, deceitful, which means that it's not right, it's wrong, it's, it has sin, it has, you know, we, we don't even know what we really want. Those type of things is desperately wicked. That's what God says that our hearts are without him. When we have him and we continue to read the word of God, our hearts and our minds will start to be transformed into more into the image and likeness of him and his son. So right here, that is why it's important to read the word of God because when we're reading the word of God, we are hearing God through the scriptures. So the Bible also says in Psalm 119 verse 105, it says, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So what does this mean? It means that when we read the word of God, is a lamp unto our feet means that when we walk the direction that we go in, God's word leads and guides us. His word lights up the path that we should go in. So when we read the word, that is telling us that God's word gives us direction for our lives. He tells us exactly what it is that we need to be doing. So the more we read the word of God, the more we will have the direction that we need for life. We will know the path that we should take. It says that in his, the word of God is a lamp unto our feet and is a light unto my path. So it's like when you read the word of God, it illuminates. That means that it lights up and now you're able to know which path to take. You won't pick the wrong path because the word of God is going to tell you exactly which path to take. Okay, so the Bible also says in Psalm 119 and verse 11, that your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. So as we continue to read the word of God, we should hide it in our heart so that we won't do things that comes against him. We won't do things that, that doesn't please God. We won't, you know, be uh, angry at our parents and do disrespectful things and be disobedient to our parents. We won't go to school and be disrespectful to our teachers. Or we won't um, be disrespectful to those around us like the other children in our class. We won't do things that will harm others because that will mean that we are disobeying God. And like we said, like I said right here in this verse, it says that we hide the word of God in our hearts so we don't sin against God. And when we sin against people, when we sin against our parents and teachers and our peers, those people around us, we are sinning against God. So this is my teaching on today on hearing the voice of God through the Bible. We see here, I'm just going to go over it again, a recap of what we just learned. So we just learned that when we open up the Bible and we read any scripture, it is inspired by God. And God is the one who is speaking to us directly through his word. We also learned that the word of God is powerful, it's active, it moves, it performs, it does whatever God says it will do. We also learned that when we read the word of God, we are receiving instructions and directions for our lives. And we also learned that when we read the Bible, we are getting it inside of our heart. Remember, because I said your heart is deceitful and wicked without God. But with God, and as you continue to read his word, you are building your character. You are building your relationship with God. You are building up to know him and to know his voice. When you read the Bible, you are hearing the very voice of God. In this next section, I will be giving you a quiz to see what you have learned in this segment. Here are five questions, two multiple choice and three true or false questions to test and see what you have learned today. Question number one, how can I hear the voice of God from this lesson? Is it in my school textbook? 
in the Bible or at the movies? You are correct if you answered in the Bible. Remember, this lesson is all about hearing God through the Bible. Question number two. All scripture is inspired by God. True or false? If you answer true, you are correct. Remember when I read 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 through 17 that says, All scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching the truth, rebuking error, correcting faults, and giving instruction for right living, so that the person who serves God may be fully qualified and equipped to do every kind of good deed. Question number three. Who is the Word of God? Is it, number one, my favorite actor? Number two, my heart? Or number three, Jesus? If you answered number three, Jesus, you are correct. The Bible says, The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. That tells us right there, as well as the scripture that says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That shows us right there that Jesus is the Word. Question number four. The Word of God gives me direction. Is that true or false? If you answer true, you are correct. The Bible says in Psalm 119, 105, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. That lets us know right there that God's word gives us direction. If we go back to 2 Timothy verse 3, 16 through 17, it tells us that all scriptures is inspired by God in giving instructions for right living. So right there, that shows us that it, that is also direction for our lives. Here is the last question I have for you. My heart is always right. True or false? If you answered false, you are correct. And I explained to you that the heart is not right. The Bible says in Jeremiah 17 verse 9 that the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? So that tells us right there that our heart is not always right. Let me know what you think about the questions. Let me know what you think about this lesson for today. You can always interact with me on any platform that I have given to you. I will leave them down below right here. Goodbye, guys.